Well, we'll go ahead and get started today. So welcome everyone to Business as Unusual, where we're speaking to badass industry leaders on how they are thriving and surviving in our current economic crisis. I'm Lisa Baining. I'm one of the account managers at Red Caffeine, and I will be your moderator for today's session. We are excited to have Mark Morrell join us today as we talk through stories of inspiration, innovation, and hopefully injecting a little bit of positivity into what has been a very interesting business climate during the 2020 year. So as we get started, a few quick housekeeping things. We do have everyone on mute for today's session, so please do use the chat feature as a few of you already have to check in, or you can also use the QA function at the bottom of the screen to send questions that Mark will answer at the end of today's session. As we go through, please also note um, that a lot of great content is going to be shared today. So we are recording today's session that will also be sent out afterwards and you'll be able to access it on our Red Caffeine website. So stay tuned, take notes and get ready for great stories of inspiration and positivity. With that, I'd like to go ahead and give a shout out to our restaurants for today. Uh, we do advertise the first five people who register for our webinars do get free lunch on us. So we had a check-in from Donati's Pizza in Lake Bluff, Illinois, as well as the Asian Cafe in Loveland, Colorado. We know a few more people still need to order their lunch, might be delaying it for a little bit later today, uh, but look forward to seeing those. And Kathy, I see you're eating from Suzette's Creperies in Wheaton, Illinois. So sounds delicious. Yeah, one of my best home um, uh, businesses we frequent, you know, at least once a week. So excited to be back in, in Chicago to, to give my local restaurant some more love. Perfect. Well, Kathy, I will tune things over to you. For those of you who are new to the Red Caffeine family, Kathy Steele is our founder and principal. So good morning, Kathy, and we'll take it away. All right. So as Lisa mentioned, I'm Kathy Steele with Red Caffeine, and um, we really uh, just build and execute growth plans. And I'm so excited to introduce my friend and um, badass boss, uh, Mark Morrell uh, from Get Main Lobster. Really excited to talk with him today. And so Mark, tell us a little bit about Get Main Lobster and your, and your overall business. Yeah, um, well first, you know, thanks for, you know, thinking of me and excited to share what we've been going through. Um, in a nutshell, we deliver Maine lobster and seafood from Portland, Maine to any doorstep in the United States and sometimes beyond. Uh, you know, that's in the plan to have that be more than sometimes. Um, really focus on the net customer experience. So we try to procure and put things together, curate uh, experiences that will um, bring some joy to families around the dinner table. Uh, one of the things I've always understood is that a lot of our fondest memories, uh, food is involved. So, you know, lobster is one of those uh, types of food that uh, can really help elevate and upscale um, any dining experience. So, well, so absolutely. yeah, we've been, yeah, we've been doing it since 2010, right? And you've had direct experience, so. Um, Yes, this is our 10th year, and uh, we're right on the wharf. Uh, that's what you see behind me, and uh, yeah. Well, I mean, just it's just such a pleasure to, to have you on today, and I, I am excited to talk about your business and what's going on right now and, and how you've been um, impacted by the, the current economic conditions. And so, you know, we've, we've promoted that you're just having this explosive growth um, in the past few months, but, you know, I've known you for a bit of your, your business journey. And so talk a little bit about how this, this impact um, has been and, and tell us a little bit more about what's going on right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, it started mid-March and uh, I have a finance advisor and she said, you know, we have to spend our time today having the, you know, difficult conversation about uh, what are you going to do, you know, and um, because you're probably going to have to let people go, you're going to have to cut things back, you know, you got to figure out how much time you have before you're really in trouble. 
you know, all those things. And, um, and I said, yeah, we should go through that exercise, you know, for sure. Um, but I have a feeling that um, that's not going to occur uh, for us and we're not going to have to make those decisions. Um, and I said that because I started to see uh, an increase in traffic, an increase in sales, abnormal uh, sales on the weekend prior. So I think it was, it was my, it's interesting because it was my brother's birthday that I declined to go to at his house, you know, and I just said, I don't think we should be doing that considering, you know, uh, what's going on. And then we literally got locked down a couple of days later. So, um, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I was like, let's do it because we should do that, you know, and, and I need that. And that's why I have you. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't think it's going to go that way. Um, and I was, I was, I was right. And um, it, it's funny, what we're experiencing today is what I envisioned. Um, yet I didn't want it to happen this way. Um, I'm grateful that it did, that this is the ripple effect I'm having. Um, but, you know, we're where I wanted to be, um, which is, awesome. Uh, it stinks that it's um, not happening for everyone, you know, and we do think about those that are having a very difficult time right now. And really, we're just every day grateful that we get to provide some amount of joy to people um, during this strange time, you know. Yeah, I, I, you know, Mark, it is, I, I'm glad you um, both agreed to be interviewed and um, are talking about sort of that dynamic of success in a climate where many people are not having um, things. So, you know, talk a little bit about the feeling of seeing yeah. your business go like this and then other businesses are, you know, met with the fate that you were discussing earlier in March that you could have potentially been in as well. Yeah, and it influenced our communication in the very beginning because you you have a feeling that you're gonna have a positive benefit from this and you don't want to, um, you wanna be advantageous, right? But in uh, an ethical manner, and luckily for me, right? You know, I've been involved in, um, UNTO, uh, which is an organization that focuses on empathy. Um, so I, I knew that, but I'm a business owner, right? And I just acquired another business and yeah. this is what I'm supposed to do, but this is a time that's unprecedented. I don't know how to act. So I got help. I, I said that to the team. I said, listen, it's likely this is going to occur and we're going to be very, very busy. And this is what I desire for us and you and me and, and everyone, right? Because we could serve more people. Um, yet we have to be sensitive um, and we have to take care of ourselves. <laughs> so, um, so it was very tricky in the beginning. And so I just said, hey, we're here. And, you know, we exist. I did a lot of video updates and things like that. And, but the mentality of it was, all right, I got to protect my team going to protect the business so you know i have my face mask here you know that i it's lobsters so you can see it of course uh, you know everybody masks everybody gloves you know try to keep as much distance as we can um we're funneling volume to other partners that we have so that we don't get too over stretched um and you know we're saying be well be safe like 85 times a day and um, you know which is an interesting habit that I have formed and others have formed that I think will continue for quite a while which is a great habit um, but yeah you know in the beginning it was difficult and, and then all right we're now we're in the middle of it we're, everyone is uncertain so you know, let's do our thing and just be ourselves and do what we do. And me being chief curator, I got to go out and procure stuff that you, the consumer, I believe would like um, because you 
have to wait in line at the grocery store. And then when you get in there, what you want is not available. And then meat packing facilities are shutting down and all this stuff, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, so now this is occurring. So now I got to figure out this. Um, we've been selling out of stuff every single day. It's been very difficult to, to manage inventory because the volume is at sometimes 10 times more than normal. Um, but on average, five times more than normal. Wow. Still incredible. Five times more. Yeah. And one curious thing was how there is a major paradigm shift within the crew. So prior to COVID, on a normal non holiday week, um, you know, 150 orders going out the door you know, is a, is a good day. But you know, we have some days where there's only 35 or 40. And then suddenly, you know, we'll do 900. And we're like, oh, that wasn't so bad <laughs> in a single day. Oh, and my gosh. If we do less than 400, that's like, wow, we'd be done at noon. <laughs> and that was, that was pretty quick. Um, because on the fly, I had to figure out how am I going to manage this volume. I, I can manage and plot. Um, however, if more and more people are just going to be coming and coming and coming, you know, at some point, you know, I have to cut it off. And we actually had to cut it off for Mother's Day. And I hated to do it because there was all this momentum built, you know, and there's a lot of expense to building momentum and then shutting it down and then trying to rebuild it. So I knew it was going to cost us in a few ways. One, we were disappoint some people that were like, wow, I found a place that can do something special for my mom, uh, but they won't let me have it delivered this week. Uh, you know, so that was difficult to do and not something I want to do again. So now I have the challenge of, all right, Mother's Day numbers, you had to cut it off. You probably missed out on X. So how do you figure out how to execute on X the next time that potentially will happen? Yeah. Well, Who knows? So it could be next week. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Memorial Day coming up, people might be wanting to do something special then too. Right. So, you know, it, it's sort of interesting. Do you, you know, we, we've been sort of sharing this Harvard Business Review report about um, uh, organizations that do offensive and defensive sort of moves in order um, to kind of protect their, their business. Like you, you technically could make some really challenging or, or make some wrong decisions when you're accelerating like this and placing a bat on a continuation of that accelerated um, sort of growth that you're having. So how are you thinking about some of the offensive and defensive moves in your organization that are going to, you know, serve you six months from now, a year from now? Um, <clears throat> you know, since we are seeing the uptick, it gives us a, a little bit of well, it gave us a lot of opportunity to get creative with ad spend. Um, so in December, I can spend as much as I want and not really have to be concerned, but it falls off a cliff in January for a couple of weeks and then you have Valentine's Day. But we've never had the, December is the only month where you have complete freedom to experiment aggressively to understand, you know, <clears throat> you got CAC, you know, cost per acquisition and lifetime value. So what's a CAC that I'm okay with if it's a brand new person, right? I'll pay more for a brand new person because they're going to order again and they have a certain lifetime value. So it's figuring that out. So we've been able to experiment with that. And so I believe that we now, because we have so much data that um, we can control the volume, most of it, right? What we can't control is the organic or the viral moment. Sure. And for example, you know, there's a company that we, um, you know, we work with where we procure most of our lobsters from <clears throat> that went viral on WeChat. And literally did 2,500 orders placed in 24 hours 
and they're fairly new to e-commerce. They're more of a, you know, wholesaler. And I was like, wow, that is wild. We need to figure out how we can throttle and organize this because fulfilling your 2,500 orders and then the orders that we have and then uh, all the others, because we're managing two brands of our own um, and a pie company. <laughs> so I was like, all right, um, we'll figure this out. We figured it out, you know. Um, but I, I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, you could, because cash flow is great, so you could get a little bit too aggressive. Um, but it's an awesome opportunity for discovery and, and being able to figure out, hey, this is what I'm willing to do. And then I can reduce my cost here so I can do a little bit more. And um, because we all should be in a business like mine, I really need to be spending more money to capture more money to capture new customers because that's, you know, once they experience us once, right, we take such good care of them that, you know, we're going to have them for quite a while. Well, I definitely agree that that's relatable to any business. Acquiring a new customer is much more costly than, um, you know, retaining a customer. So, but, you know, I think you're a master um, marketer and, and you've got some really great thinking around direct marketing and, and um, have, have just probably been able to scale some of the theories that have um, kind of been in play in your business right now. But I, I do think it's it's important to, to know like being okay with being with having some level of success right now because I believe that you know your organization and others that are also um, having an opportunity to capitalize are gonna help us all you know pull us all up and pull us all through the next uh, six months a year um, but also th this when you see a lane open up that ability to 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 test in that lane. This is like an unprecedented time just to do some testing in the lane. Um, and, and it's, it's pretty cool that you're, you're leveraging that totally. right now. Yeah. We're able to test SKUs as well, you know, and introduce people to different things and um, outside of, you know, outside of brand that we typically wouldn't offer. And um, so that's neat. Yeah, we're, we are, I, I think we're seeing across a couple of our clients as well, just better understanding of, you know, putting something out there because we think there's, there's uh, an opportunity and, and being able to see that, that um, work is so, so super exciting right now. So yeah. let's kind of step back the big picture. I'm going to let, uh, I have Lisa like bring up the visual, you know, your, I want you to talk us through your Jerry Maguire moment so you yeah. know one of my favorite movies so yeah one of the best yeah I, you know it, <clears throat> i don't know what i was working on at the time but one of the things that i i have felt for quite a while is that the uh, food service and restaurant industries are pretty two-dimensional um Grubhub came in and said, hey, let us help you deliver a different kind of experience. And that's cool. And you saw what that did. I mean, look at all Postmates and all of them, right? You know, and then HelloFresh and Blue Apron, you know, come up. Um, but those are not restaurants. Um, restaurants, you know, could have been doing that already. Um, and but they weren't food service has so many customers, right? So they have the corporation, but then that corporation has so many customers and, and, and food service is having a very difficult time right now um, because everything's shut down. And so they have all this product and, and, and nowhere to know what, nothing to do with it. Right. So, you know, there should have been mechanisms and programs well into play uh, prior to anything like this, simply to be an innovative, robust, out of the box, you know, type of servicing. I'm always thinking, how can I serve you uh, better in a different way, more? Um, and that's what inspires me to create new pathways. And 
food service, restaurants, grocery are all programs that we've been working on and, and uh, engineering for years. Um, we've even implemented, you know, a couple programs to help grocery and even suppliers move, have a mechanism of moving uh, a product from point A to point B and skipping everything in the middle. Um, so I think this is an amazing opportunity for the Jerry Maguires of the world to really look at, you know, sit back and observe and you know, what's missing. Um, and can I, can I design something to fill that gap? You know, it could be outside of food, it could be anything. And I mean, look at Zoom, right? You know, look at what Zoom did and then look at all the other things that are gonna come from that. Uh, as well. And so I'm pretty excited about what innovation is going to, we have no idea. There's stuff that we haven't experienced that is going to be born out of this. And that's what I'm super psyched to see. And it's going to be the, you know, the Jerry Maguire's, you know, taking a risk, risking it all and going through a lot of hardship, but then winning in the end, you know, and in a big way. Yeah. But happy. <laughs> Who does not love that story? But I, I think we're seeing that too. Um, you know, organizations that are uh, be a, being able to retool some of the things they currently do to to serve a need. It's 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 just happening in little micro um, cosms all over the nation right now. That's what you know. That's our American way of of being. Uh, you know, ingenuitive. Ingen what is that word? Ingenuity. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just exciting to see what you're, you know, so talk a little bit more about, you know, that disruption um, to the hospitality industry. I, you know, you play some, it, it's been interesting. So you talk about risk. I know you took some great risk in, in you know, capturing more um, of the supply chain with your, that recent acquisition you made. Um, so talk a little bit more about that, because I think that's, along the lines of where other businesses are, are needing to think in terms of how do they protect their um, sourcing strategy and, and so I'll let you yeah. talk about innovation. Yeah, I mean, one of the, you know, one of the toughest things in, so I designed the business on purpose to be completely entirely virtual. Um, and then we started procuring some value add products ourselves, you know, um, but we always had fulfillment, you know, done for us and always had great partners. Um, but I wanted to really dive deep into, you know, how do I, I have all this information. How do I now start engineering experiences at the absolute right price that shows tremendous value so that I can capture even more people to serve and um, implement uh, all of those B2B programs that I want to do to help grocery, food service, and restaurants serve their customers in a new, new and unique way. Um, so um, <clears throat> an opportunity came in front of me that I discussed and pondered for you know quite a while and and then finally just said, all right, I'm doing it. Didn't know how, um, but I did it. And had no idea that, you know, it would be the absolute perfect time you know, to do it. Um, <clears throat> but now we're right on the wharf. Um, we buy direct. Um, so that business used to be all online retail or actually catalog retail if you remember catalogs um and then it pivoted when the internet hit and started doing wholesale more so it's like that's perfect because i want to do more wholesale so i'll have all this learnings um, and i also want to get closer to the product and the packaging so that i can improve that um, and lower the cost so that i can provide more value and the only way for me to do that is to get as close as possible and now i'm as close as anyone could be. Um, so it's awesome. Uh, plus, you know, every morning when I go to work, I have a beautiful view. 
Uh, so that's a nice little benefit. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Nothing like but, uh, the ocean. <laughs> yeah, totally. And um, so, yeah, it was a massive risk and, you know, didn't know how I was going to pull it off, but I just went anyway. I, I typically do that. I've done that before. And my attitude has been, well, Mark, um, despite what's running through your head, it seems to always work out for you. So, you know, I'm not going to curse, but you know, screw it and um, <laughs> let's do it. And, uh, yeah. And so you picked the perfect timing, you know, December really uh, to take on a new business venture, one of your busiest seasons. So it, maybe it did, it was a, a good time to challenge yourself because you didn't even know it was coming three, four months yeah. from then. And, and so you at least got a chance of, being baptized by fire in that, in that initial um, first stage of that acquisition and takeover. So, um, you know, I, I uh, would love to just hear you talk about some of the challenges. So you, you know, you're growing and I, I, don't, I, I don't think even till you kind of talk to me a little bit about this, how do you handle recruiting and safety and all the things that go on in, in trying to scale up um, during a, a time like this? Family and close, close friends of family. <laughs> um, so college kids have been God sent and that's Bree and Hannah right there. They're um, pre just graduated and, and then Hannah's got a, uh, one more year, I think. Um, but, you know, if my niece is working. My brother's always worked with me, but my niece is working with me now. And then Hannah's brother just started working. So um, in the beginning, it was super duper hard because we didn't have them. We had Abby, my niece, and uh, maybe a couple of others. But, you know, I was doing a lot of hands-on work. and then. I was like, all right, we just need bodies. Um, but very cautious to bring in anybody. Um, so only people that, you know, I trusted that would be honest with me with how they're feeling uh, health-wise. And, um, and that would adhere to all of the CDC um, suggestions of you know, being safe at work. Um, so it's worked out. You know, we've had everybody's been healthy and everybody's tired because <laughs> um, they're working hard, but everybody's healthy. Um, but that's the the most difficult thing because the things are going to open, and we have this wholesale business that summertime is its busiest time now because Maine is requiring everybody to quarantine for two weeks if they come here from out of state. I don't really foresee us having a lot of tourism however you know a million people live here um and they're going to want to do stuff uh, so mainers are going to finally get to enjoy their state in the summertime which is nice um so we don't we currently do not have the ability to service our summer wholesale business um like we have in the past and so we are saying no for now until we figure something out or we're telling people that if they do want a bunch of lobster they have to come get it instead of us delivering it because we literally can't be without the manpower uh for two hours wow. you know somebody doing a run um we even have a luckily have been able to implement a system where all the lobster is pretty much coming to us um so that's been super helpful um, but the value add products, you know, very difficult. So a person has to go sometimes get that stuff, but you need that person because you got boxes to pack and we've committed to writing notes in every single box, you know, so that adds time and, you know, despite the volume and, uh, yeah, that's been a challenge, you know, for sure. And, you know, I hope I can retain everyone, but summer's coming up and <clears throat> if they work in the restaurant industry and they're a waiter or waitress or bartender, 
they're going to want that money, right? And we're not, you know, we're not in a position to compete with that, you know, because they make big bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, you know, we're, we're all in this really unique position now with unemployment, um, you know, being more advantageous sometimes than actually working. Um, but it's, yeah. it's interesting. I want to like just key on the fact that you're saying you're not, you're going to slow the roll. You're not going to go after that opportunity yeah. because you just can't staff up that we've heard that over and over again, especially like during low unemployment, um, uh, so I'm, I'm just, it is interesting to hear you say that during times yeah. where there is available talent and there will be available talent. Um, is, is there any, you know, thought to just how, how could you go after that, that, that workforce? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, one, I communicate with, you know, the, the core group um, and try to get a pulse on how they feel. Right, because then you got to consider that like your key people. How do they feel if somebody new walks in, right? That they don't know, and maybe they would trust them if I know. So that's a consideration as well. Um, luckily, you know everybody on the team works super duper hard, and we're doing it, uh, and it's becoming easier um, because we're implementing things daily to make life easier, you know, and like so much goes into shipping a lobster from Maine to Los Angeles, so much, <laughs> you know, it's, and if it's live lobster, right, so much more. That lobster, every single lobster has to be looked at and inspected before it goes in the box, every single one, because you can't have a dead lobster, run, right? So imagine that you're shipping 900 boxes in a day, and let's say 450 are live lobster. You know, that's a lot of time. Now they're fast, right? And they've probably done a little bit of work prior to, but still every single lobster, you know, is inspected saying, yep, this is primo. It can, it can make the trip. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, so we've gotten really good at doing that at scale. Now, where we're at today is awesome and it's where I wanted to be, but it's only scratching the surface of where I really want to go. So we're actually, I'm actually already thinking that we've just moved into this new facility and we've already outgrown it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Which, you know, it stinks to say that. Um, so I've started passively looking at, all right, what am I going to do? Um, and where are the opportunities? So, well, I'm, I'm going to guess that there might be some real estate available in the in the near term. So, um, totally. I, you know, just a quick question. One more, like, specific question about uh, workforce safety. You know, is there anything different that um, people that are working with food have to be considering in their facilities? We're seeing so much great content come from some of our manufacturing clients around mm -hmm. how they're. Um, protecting their workforce. And, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because as other businesses are returning to the work um, place, they're, they're like hungry for that shared experience. Yeah. The, um, the state's been great with communicating to the businesses on, Hey, here, you know, print these out and put them all over the building and communicate with the team about, you know, these are things to know. These are the things to do. Uh, these are the things to look out for you know, yada, yada, yada. So the state's been a great partner with that. Um, you know, and I often commend the state for taking early action. You know, we're, we're getting a little bit of restless, but, you know, we've only had 66 deaths. And, um, you know, that's incredible when you look at places like New York and, and Boston that are very, very close to us. Um, and experiencing something very, very different. Now, obviously, we're well spaced out. Um, but um, <clears throat> the only difficulty is just having to remind people, you know, if they don't have their mask on, um, if they don't have their gloves on. Um, in the beginning, you know, I was constantly reminding, but, you know, after a while, it just became a habit. And then I went out and scored some 
you know, fancy Gucci and Louis Vuitton masks <laughs> faux. <laughs> um, well, you know, you're so going to have to send one to me. So just. Yes. I have one still in the packaging. So I, I will. Um, so that's been kind of fun to like give people a little bit of style. Yeah. Yes, I've been thinking about that quite a bit. So, uh, hey, one question, like personal question, I see a lot of questions coming in from um, the attendees, and I just want to ask you a little bit about, um, you know, you mentioned the Hunto Institute, and uh, and we both have had such a powerful experience um, being involved in Hunto. But can you talk about, you know, anything that, like one or two things that you might have learned about yourself? during this time um, that might have surprised you? Hmm. Um, <clears throat> calmer, <laughs> you know, and I didn't notice how calm I uh, had become in, until recently. And, and, I, and that's interesting. Because I've had to deal, and, and I've lost my cool a couple of times, right? This whole inventory thing is just impossible. I shouldn't put that out in the universe, but it just feels impossible to manage. Um, and it's, you know, our, our current system is, is not working. Um, and, and I'm part of the problem. <laughs> um, yet, figure it out, <laughs> you know. Um, but there's been, you know, every day, I mean, right, right before I came here, I, I got a call between a supplier who was quite upset with how he was, um, someone on my team spoke with him. And I was just like, oh, I wish it wasn't today to, that I want, you know, I need to handle that. But I was super calm on the phone when that person was quite upset. And, um, you know, so I, I think that's one of the things I've noticed the most is how calm I am with all of it. and. I'm still getting acclimated to the the change. I remember when I first got into the into the lobster business and our first year was massive growth, right? And I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> um, so my mind around numbers, um, it took a minute, right, to figure out like the numbers of it all and the cash flow of things and, and um, so now with what we're going through now, I'm going through that same learning thing again. All right, Mark, uh, your brain is about to make a change. You don't quite get it yet. So what do you have available to you? And luckily for me, I got all kinds of resources available to me from um, uh, brain capital. Uh, so that's one thing that's occurring with me right now is you know, the numbers have changed. Right, so that changes a lot, but I haven't experienced what we've, we're going through right now. Luckily, I got help, right? So I become a pupil, uh, which I'm always a pupil, but so. Well, that, that was a life lesson that took me a while to learn is to ask for help. And once I started asking, it just allowed me to grow so much faster because I wasn't afraid to ask anymore. But I, I think that was a tough thing when I was younger in my earlier career. So Lise, there's a lot of questions that have come through. Do you want to like start to give um, Mark some of the... Yeah. So first one will be an easy one, Mark. We had someone ask a little bit more about what the Junto, Junto Institute is. So maybe you could give us a, a brief recap in your experience, what Junto is, how it's affected you. I'm awful at describing it, but um, I can share what it does for me, but um, basically, so it's, it's, it's like B school, um, but the core of it is, in, is empathy. So you, empathy has been something that I have always put a lot of weight into because I've seen the value of empathy and it really drives a lot of our engineering and, and design of you know products and communication but i don't know it, it's just a, an amazing organization that allows you to uh, become a great leader not through 
um, you know, a book, but through unique experiences, other people, uh, in this core value of, of, of empathy and emotional intelligence. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm a different leader than I was when I started and I'm a better leader. <laughs> um, and I'm much calmer. So. Yeah, I, I think it's like an MBA in business while you're running a business. So, you know, most of us yeah. running businesses don't have that time to stop and, you know, take two years of college to kind of learn how to run a business and react to all the different um, evolutions that you face in business. But Hunto sort of supports you through all those different life cycles. Um, but, you know, definitely founded on working as your, on yourself as a leader um, in order to, to work on how you come across it um, to your employees and, and staff. So. Well, speaking of being a leader, I've, the next few questions are about your team actually and Mark, you leading that team. So first question being, in such a vulnerable time when a level of transparency, or, or I should say, what level of transparency has been working to keep your team informed and, and understanding what's happening in the business? Yeah, in the very beginning, we were doing, um, you know, daily huddles. And, you know, the transparency of it is every day is new, right? You know, we really are in true uncertain times. You know, will we be just as busy tomorrow as we are today? I have no idea. You know, and I'm just honest about that. And, you know, I... Um, have a lot of, I'd like to believe that I have a lot of humility in it, and I hope that the people that work with me uh, agree with that, but I, um, <clears throat> so that serves me well. So I, I'm, I'm okay with making mistakes. Um, I'm okay getting my hands dirty and, and um, you know, and I think we're all in this together, you know, to be cliche, and that's kind of my attitude, and I listen, and sometimes it takes me a while to, <clears throat> accept and execute on what I hear um, or validate. But, you know, right now my sole focus is on keeping um, my team protected and feeling well and feeling excited because we have this amazing, you know, I guess task, but opportunity to serve people and bring them some happiness, you know, when they can't go out and get it. And as you're talking about your team and kind of mitigating those circumstances, there's two questions that were asked by our audience that are fairly similar, but really knowing you're experiencing this monumental growth, how is your team feeling about it? And how are you handling the ups and downs? You mentioned getting a, you know, custom face mask and Kathy's going to keep irking you to get that <laughs> last. Gucci one, um, but you know, what are some of the other things that you've done to help mitigate how your team is feeling? Because obviously going from 150 orders a day to 900 a day, that's a, a monumental task for anybody, that one bite of an elephant at a time. So how are you helping your team yeah. with this? Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, as I mentioned early on, you know, the paradigm shift that occurred with them was interesting. Um, I created an incentive based upon units out the door, um, which allows them to control the volume. I implemented um, other ways for us to fulfill our orders so that we can protect us and so that we can get rest. <laughs> um, we throttle Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, so we allow Monday and Thursday to be massive and we throttle Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. And um, I was buying lunch every single day for the past couple of months. Um, I've gone to, I'll buy lunch on the big days, you know, and uh, I just listen, you know, um, <clears throat> I do. Um, I've packed boxes. I've taped boxes, I've moved boxes, I've done runs. A run is when we gotta go get product, um, you know. And I listen, I try to provide what they need. Uh, I could be doing better for sure um, because 
I think uh, my ingredients are a little bit different <laughs> than the average. Um, even though I'm tired, you know, I could go, I'm, I'm good, you know. Um, but that's not everyone. You know, people need rest. And I'm, at some point, I'm going to need rest. Um, I'm not there yet, but I go to bed at like 7.30 now, so. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. You're right there with Daphne and I, I think. Yeah, yeah was, I'm waking up at four, so it's like I better go to bed at seven. I'm getting up at four, so. Oh, well, knowing that obviously you hope you're running on little sleep but still making smart choices, what would be the two smartest moves you've made to pivot during this time? Two smartest moves. Um, <clears throat> during this time, you know, funny, I mean, like the lunch thing just takes away decisions and creates time. Um, and then throttling Tuesdays and Wednesdays, because then I created time. And you know, some relaxation because so the culture we have, I mean, at the end of the day, we sit down and, and not me every day, but the crew gets together and they just sit in one of the offices and talk. So the more I can, the more I can do so that that becomes earlier in the day or, you know, it's fun and it's not a bitch session, you know, and, you know, that's what I want to do. So, my smartest moves are creating an environment where their energy is high and they're smiling. And so funny enough, the simplest things, probably the smartest ones I did. Now, I was also lucky that I finally implement, implemented my board and they're amazing. So I'm just, I'm lucky on all ends, you know, so. So I definitely worked hard. <laughs> I did work hard. I'm also very lucky. All right, so last few questions I have for you, Mark. One of them being, how important do you think it is to utilize digital marketing like social media during this time? Yeah, funny thing is uh, I had to get help with social because I just, I was doing it and it just got to be too much. So I had to get help. But our Instagram's been blowing up and seeing like the stories and I'm like stories, I don't know how to create a story. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's, social media is awesome. Um, it's a great way to engage with people in a platform that they're comfortable with. Um, and it's also a great way to, I mean, it's all people have right now and so if you can say anything, it doesn't even have to be on brand or related to what it is that you do for commerce. You know, if you have a feeling and put it out there because people want to hear it. And I think, you know, that's the role that social, I think social can take, social could take a positive turn because we're all being empathetic to what's going on. And hopefully that is something that remains because social can also be a place for vomit and um because people are very brave on social and uh instead of like coming from love they love to come from you know the opposite and it's boring <laughs> you can hide behind being anonymous on social somewhat at least yeah well totally you can create a whole pseudo person and just be mm -hmm. a troll and the people do that and i'm like why? Like, what's the benefit? All right. So second to last question, what is your biggest challenge with being a 100% virtual company? Well, we're not 100% virtual anymore. The, the biggest challenge was no one is going to love the customer as much as we are ever. So anyone that touches, if anyone that you depend upon for any part of the transaction, right? We look at it as first click to last dish. If anybody else is helping us along the way, 
they do not love our customer as much as we do. And that's a challenge, you know? So you can find someone that will love you as much as you love your customer, but they will not love your customer as much as you do. They, they just, they can't. I shouldn't say they can't, they just won't. All right, and final question for today's session, Mark. What is your next growth step? I'm afraid to share that publicly because some of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what can you uh, publicly no. share as a growth step? No, yeah, no, I'll, I'm fine with. We have a variety of things that we're working on, but we're we're currently in, engaged in conversations with uh, a food service purveyor provider. Um, a sizable one and looking to um, start designing programs with them now so that you know one we can serve their customers now but two um, this new channel opportunity for for them and for us um, can be in existence when things get back to normal so wonderful well Mark, Kathy, thank you both so much for your time today. Mark, especially hearing Thursday is one of your biggest days. So we've taken you yeah. away from the team. So thank you for making that extra time to join us. As we looked ahead, if you have any other questions that you didn't ask for Mark or want to touch base with him later, we've got his email up on the screen here. He did tell us, obviously, when that you are experiencing, you know, five to 10 times uh, more orders than you've ever seen previously that his time is very valuable. So if he doesn't get back to you right away, please don't take it as a, a personal affront. He'll try to, um, but you can email him, refer to unusual in the subject line, or you can also connect with Mark on LinkedIn as well. Cool. Thanks for having me. Fun. Yes, no, thank you. It's been great. So for those of you, um, again, this is being recorded, so we will send it out afterwards, but we look forward to seeing you next week for our next Business as Unusual webinar episode, May 21st at noon Central Standard Time. We'll be featuring Jeff Taylor, who's the president and CEO of Crafts Technology and Elk Grove Village, Illinois business. Crafts actually had an amazing opportunity during this COVID-19 pandemic to help support one of their customers by creating critical tooling that would increase the number of test vials available for COVID-19 testing. It tested the metal of their company, so to speak, and also gave them a great opportunity to try something new. Jeff and the Crafts team have also been working on COVID-19 work workplace best practices, and Jeff's going to share more about that as they recently were certified as a best-in-class company for their COVID-19 practices. So stay tuned as Jeff will be sharing more about that and of course, our usual dose of inspiration, innovation, and positivity. So with that, thank you for everyone for coming today. If this is your first time hearing about Red Caffeine, feel free to check out our website at redcaffeine.com. You can also find more information there regarding our next Business as Unusual webinar, as well as upcoming ones as we look to the summer months. So thank you again, Kathy. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. And Great job. Each of you for attending today. We'll see you soon. See you soon, Mark. Bye. Bye. See Bye. You.